Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. May our Lord, the Holy Spirit, come upon you, rest upon you, as He rested upon the Lord Jesus. May He come to make the difference in the life of each of you. He is the guide. The Holy Spirit is the guide. The Holy Spirit is the guide. Is Jesus. He is Jesus in spirit. The Holy Spirit is the mind of God, the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the one who was there at the very beginning that with His word, with His voice, brought into existence the things that exist now. So imagine you, just think a little bit, imagine you receiving the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Imagine you being glued together with Him, or He being glued together with you, but He will only be glued together with you with your willingness, if you allow Him, if you surrender yourself to Him. It's not like a marriage in this world. It's a covenant, it's a marriage, but an eternal marriage for all eternity. And that's what Jesus meant when He said, Look, I'm going, but I'm not going to leave you orphans. I will come back to be with you with you, and you are going to see me. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, they see Jesus. They see Him in their own image. When they look at themselves in the mirror, they see Jesus because they reflect the image of God, the image which was lost by Adam and Eve, because their life changes, their mind changes, their heart changes, their mannerism changes, that difficult temperament, that person who was nervous, that person that was stubborn, that nature that enjoyed, that liked sin, doesn't exist anymore. It died and it was buried in the water baptism. It's the water baptism, that's what it is. You bury the old nature. It has to happen. When it doesn't happen, then the person continues alive in the flesh, and unfortunately, they live from failure to failure, from defeat to defeat. And the worst of all is that their defeat starts into their own house. Their life is defeat, but they feel like they are a failure spiritually. And obviously, they will fail as well in their love life and so on. They will fail in everything they do because they are living in the kingdom of the world. They are subjected to the natural faith, the natural faith. The faith that everyone has, everyone has, sinners, unbelievers, good, evil, everyone has this type of faith, the natural one. However, when a person receives the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, they stop living by natural faith to live upon the direction from the supernatural faith, a heavenly faith a faith that comes from God, a faith that comes from the Spirit of God Himself. It's He who gives us the strength, He gives us understanding, He gives us direction. He is the one who inspires us. It's He who gives us a persevering spirit. It's He who gives us life. The life promised by the Lord Jesus. Jesus said, I came to bring life and more abundantly. I didn't come to bring religion because there are many religions already out there. I came to bring life, life. 
in life more abundantly. So this more abundant life, this abundant life, it starts inside of those who receive the Holy Spirit. It starts inside of us. It's what happened to me. It happened to me. So the greatest wealth, the greatest gift, the greatest glory, the most important thing in my life, which we are trying to give people, share with people, it's what is inside here, in my mind. It's here. It's not in the heart. It's here, in the mind. And we want to give it to you all. That's it. If you... If you want it, if you desire to receive it, then God wants to give it to you. The Holy Spirit is always ready, available to make His dwelling place in the life, in the body, in the mind of those who are humble in spirit. Those who are, let's say, willing towards him. Oh, I want, Bishop, I want. Oh, I know you want. Everybody wants. I know everybody says they want. It's free, isn't it? Anything that is free, it's worthwhile, as they say, isn't it? So, my dear friend, to want, everybody wants, but not everyone wants to pay the price. Not everybody wants to pay the price. And why don't they want to pay? What's the price? How much is it, Bishop? It's free. It's free, but at the same time, it's not. It's free because you don't have to spend a single penny. But it has a cost, which is the sacrifice of one's own life. Because in order for the Holy Spirit to come upon a person, that person has to make themselves available, to give themselves a hundred percent. The person has to give up, they have to surrender their personal opinions, their thoughts, their desires. They have to let go of themselves, they have to let go of the little God that they have been for themselves, the little God they have within themselves. Because they've been selfish, they only think of themselves, they only look at themselves. They are that type of person that's first them, second them, and third them, and the fourth and the fifth is also them. So, in order for this person who is selfish and self-centered, to have the Spirit of God, they have to let go of themselves, first of themselves, so that then the Holy Spirit can make His dwelling place in them. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. So, the person who wants the Lord Jesus through the Holy Spirit, within them, they have to abandon the gods of this world. They have to abandon the, the first love they had, the mother, father, the family, the children, even though this nowadays, it's not even the first place in people's lives anymore because the kids grow up in such a mess, you know, anyway, that, you know, but if you have no children, no husband, no wife, no parents, no mother, no family, then you have yourself. And perhaps you want to impose your own will to everything and everyone. So you have to let go of this Lord, Master, which is yourself, your mom. You have to let go of yourself. You have to let go of your vanities, you have to let go of everything. And then, that's when indeed, when, a, when you empty yourself, 
Then the Holy Spirit comes and fills you up. <laughs> because you know that how can the Holy Spirit make His dwelling place in a body that is already occupied? It's not possible. You have to empty yourself. And that's why the water baptism, which is as important as the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the water baptism is extremely important because the water baptism is the death of, of oneself. And the baptism in the Holy Spirit is when the Holy Spirit comes down to dwell inside of that person in their life. So there has to be water baptism. It has to happen. There has to be a burial, a burial of that old nature so that then they can be possessed by the spirit of a new life. And this is what God proposes. But to let go of the old life is something many people don't want to do. Many people don't want to leave their lovers. They don't want to leave the reckless life they leave behind. They do not want to sacrifice the disorderly life they live in. Most people don't like order. Most people don't like to be within a discipline. No. People want to be an indisciplined life. That's the reality. So how can the Spirit of God, the Spirit of order and discipline, the Spirit of the Word, the Spirit of God's commandments, the Spirit of the Word of God, how can He come upon a person that does not want to submit themselves to the order, the discipline, the Word of God, the laws? To the order. It's not possible. It's not possible at all. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to obviously die for yourself. You have to die, which is the burial, the water baptism. Die for this world, die for yourself, and then the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Did you understand, my friend? Then someone may say, oh, but so-and-so was baptized in the Holy Spirit and they were not even baptized in water. It's true, there are cases that it may happen, but it's because God already knew that that person, by faith, by faith, had already been baptized. They were already going to be baptized to fulfill the commandment, but they were already, by faith, baptized because that was their desire. Oh my God, I don't want to be what I've been anymore. So in that moment of faith, of surrender, total surrender, without any restriction, without any condition, then they can receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, of course. But right after, they have to be baptized in water. So my friend, this is the message that I have to give today. And this is what God wants to do in your life. He wants to dwell inside of you. He does not want to be by your side or over you. He does not want to be near you, neither leaning against you. He wants to turn you into His dwelling place. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.